Hey everyone, I'm Coral. Welcome back to my channel. I'm here with, I think, what is the last of my end of the year videos. I know it is technically the beginning of a new year, but I kind of forgot about this one, and it's one I'd really like to talk about, and that is uh, the books that I picked in 2020 that I predicted would be five star reads for me. And I want to talk about them because I just want to. I finished all of them. I'm proud of myself. Uh, I tried to do that in 2019 as well and only read like three of the 10 I picked out or something like that. But I did manage to finish all 10 of the ones that I picked out for 2020. I'm going to talk about them right now. The first one that I picked for this prediction uh, was a book called The Grand Dark by Richard Cadre. And this was a really strange, almost like steampunk, sci-fi fantasy dystopian novel. Um, and I think that it might have some alternate history in this and it takes place in kind of like a Germanic type of area after a war and the city is slowly trying to rebuild itself, but it has kind of a seedy underground. And the government is very concerned about making sure that people are patriotic. Like you do not want to be labeled as an anarchist because who knows what's going to happen with you. Like you'll, you'll just disappear. It's kind of, um, you know, very 1984-esque, but we're following a young man who is basically a courier he does like deliveries and he has a girlfriend who's involved with the theater and the theater is called the grand dark so that's where the name comes from a lot of the plot is just like hanging out with them and they kind of like to party and do drugs and stuff like that but then suddenly um the girlfriend disappears and i think his name was largo largo has to figure out like where she went uh this i did not end up giving five stars to I think I gave it three stars. Um, it was just, it was really an interesting setting, but the plot really did not interest me at all. I didn't care about, you know, um, following these kids around to parties. And I didn't really care when his girlfriend went missing. Um, the world was so interesting though. You know, there were like these automatons and all this stuff. And then, I don't know, the plot was just not, very interesting to me. Next on my list, I had Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. This one was very nearly a five star read for me. Um, I, I would rate it four, four and a half stars. It's very close. This follows a young woman named Mira, Mia Corveri and she um, is an orphan. She has been kind of raised by this seedy um, guy who deals with like kind of black market stuff and he, she is trying to find this school this like temple where they train assassins so that she can avenge the death of her family and she's also something that is called a darken and her shadow um can move and she can like make herself seem invisible with her shadow and like all sorts of cool stuff. <laughs> My one qualm with this is that the beginning was so hard to get into. How? I mean, I read a hundred pages of it and almost gave it up because there was just, it was just so uninteresting. And um, it was a lot to take in at first, but I am really glad that I stuck it out and managed to finish it and i really liked you know the rest of the book the beginning was just really hard to get into but i ended up really liking the book i ended up really liking this series for the most part and very nearly a five star read but not quite next on my list is rust and stardust by t greenwood and this is a fictionalized account of a real event where a a uh, girl named Sally Horner, right? That's her name? Sally Horner. She is 11 years old and she is kidnapped by this man. And man, it is just, I mean, it's based on a true story. Obviously, 
a lot of what happens and a lot of the dialogue is just imagined. Um, we don't really know exactly what these characters said to themselves or each other and, and things like that. But I think what makes this so sad is that it is based on a real event. Sally Horner was a real person and she was kidnapped. And one of the hardest parts of this book is that she is convinced by this man to convince her mother to let her go with him. And so, you know, it brings a lot of discussion about consent in here because she did consent, but she didn't really consent because she was lied to. And so it's like really terrible because this takes place in the um, 1940s, the late 40s. So I don't know, you know, stuff like this didn't happen every day. And society like wasn't as attuned to the way bad guys manipulate people and things like that and it ended up it was really sad it was so well written i zipped right through it and this was my very first five star read this year i think even it, i don't know i read it in january i believe but um yeah it was the first one that i read from this list for sure that ended up being five stars it was a great book it was so sad and i'd really recommend it um if you like true crime if you like kind of historical fiction, um, if you like fiction based on true events, if you like really sad books that make you think, um, this one was really great. Next on my list was Made for Love by Alyssa Nutting. Uh, Alyssa Nutting came to my attention, I guess, after I read her book Tampa, which I loved. I thought it was great. I was very excited to pick this one up. Um, the premise of this is that I can't, some of the, um, characters' names I'm fuzzy about, but this follows a woman named Hazel who is married to basically like a tech gazillionaire. Um, he's kind of like what Bill Gates or Mark Zuckerberg would be, uh, but you know, obviously fictional and she is trying to get away from him because he is crazy and controlling and like uh, just so bizarre um just wants to be very intrusive um into her life and like wants to control everything she does and um monitor everything she does so she's trying to flee and she ends up at her elderly father's house and as she walks in basically when she's gotten there she walks into him uncreating a real life sex doll. A life size doll. I don't know uh, exactly what they're called, but you get what I mean, right? The ones that are expensive, realistic looking, um, not just like a goofy blow up doll. Man, this is such a bizarre story. And I think Alyssa Nutting does that so well. Um, I'd love to continue to read more of her work. This one isn't quite um, a five star read. This is another one I'd give four, four and a half stars to because it was really enjoyable, but it just didn't hook me quite the way that Tampa did, which um, I was kind of hoping for. This is a bizarre one. Um, I, w I didn't really feel connected to the main character as much as I did um, to the character in her first book either, so. This was really good and another one I would recommend, just not quite like a most favorite of mine. Next on my list is Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant. And this is kind of a sci-fi horror cryptid book. Um, okay, so I guess what happens first in this book is that there was a ship and everyone on that ship got murdered. And no one really knows what happened, but it is rumored that it was like killer mermaids. So this other group is put together to go on this expedition to find out what really happened, to go to that place, to look on that boat and see what really happened. And I mean, spoiler alert, there are fucking killer mermaids. I don't, it's not really a spoiler uh, if you've ever heard of this book. But um, I really enjoyed this, however, it, felt very long, um, especially going into it. It took a long time for everyone to get on this goddamn boat and to get out to the goddamn sea. I thought that the parts with the mermaids were very interesting. 
Um, these people studying their behaviors and stuff like that was very interesting. It was gruesome. It felt claustrophobic at times, but not quite. Again, not quite a five star read. Definitely a four star. Definitely a book I would recommend um, with the caveat that it does take a while to get into the meat of this story. Next on my list is Contagion, or was I guess Contagion by Erin Bowman. And this I picked because I wanted to read and explore more um, horror set in space, not just science fiction horror like Into the Drowning Deep, but horror books that take place in space. So this one is about kind of a ragtag group on a spaceship and they are sent after like this emergency beacon that this other ship has set off and um you know they want to make sure that the crew's okay but they you know suspect that the crew's not okay and it is kind of like a space virus space parasite book and this one i didn't like a ton i didn't ever feel very connected to the characters they seemed very um kind of cookie cutter like there's uh, you know, like this one likes this one but doesn't want anyone to know and and this one is here because she flunked out of whatever school and this one just wants to make her dad proud and stuff and I don't know, they just um, didn't have a ton of personality. It was more like, it felt like the author um, worked a lot on like the backstory of these characters but then their personalities were so shallow and um, I didn't like them. Uh, I also was kind of bummed out because I thought that this is a book that would be wrapped up in one book. I didn't realize that it is the beginning to, I don't know if there is only two books or if there is three or more, but it definitely wasn't like a standalone story. And I really wish it would have been because it would have been nice if it was just wrapped up and came to a conclusion. Instead it didn't and it's not something that I think I'm going to read more of. I think I gave this three stars when I rated it. Um, not a bad book, just not one that I loved. Okay, next up is Fantastic Land by Mike Bakovin. This one I had been hearing about for quite some time before I picked it up. And this one had a really interesting format because it is about this um, hurricane that happens uh, near this amusement park called Fantastic Land. And they are not able to evacuate everybody at the park, particularly if they're not able to evacuate all the employees. So this incident happens. And then the way the book is written is it's the recounting, like interviews from the people who are involved with this incident. And you don't really know exactly what happens. It takes you a long time to get it out of everybody. Um, but I really liked the format of this when we were, you know, it was like each person has a piece of the puzzle and you don't get the full picture until, you know, you finish the book. Um, I would also say I listened to some of this on audio and I really, really liked the audio version of this, especially they had different voice actors for all the different characters. So that was really fun and um, not quite a five star read, another like four star read, uh, but one that I thought was really fun and I know lots of people would love if they, you know, felt compelled to pick it up. Then we have When Darkness Loves Us by Elizabeth Engstrom and this is a collection of two novellas. Uh, the first one is the title story, When Darkness Loves Us and it's about a young woman who is trapped in this cave system on her property and like nobody realizes that she's been stuck there uh and she is there for years and years and years and years <laughs> and it's a wild story um that's I'm, all i'm going to tell you about that one the second story is called beauty is and this is about um an older woman named martha uh she has kind of a diminished capacity she has a hard time um she has a hard time doing anything but the tasks that her parents had practiced with her for years and years and years. Um, you know, like baking bread, she's really good at that. She knows exactly how to take care of her chickens. Um, but when it comes to like finances and things like that, she has a little bit of trouble. Luckily, her mom had a really great relationship 
um, before she died with the people in the town. So they are more than willing to help Martha and make sure that she has everything she needs and that her house is taken care of and things like that. And that's where the story starts. And I really, you know, thinking about it, I'm not sure what kind of a story this is. I'm really not sure what like the major conflict or the major plot points in this would be. Um, but Martha starts to change a little bit and it's just a really, it's a really interesting story. And both of these are just strange and interesting. And I wouldn't even say that um, the second novella Beauty Is is really a horror novella, a horror story, but it was just so compelling. And the way Elizabeth Engstrom writes is really interesting. She has a really different way of telling a story, which I appreciate. So I ended up giving this one five stars. I loved both stories in this. Yeah, this is just like really a hidden gem, I think. I, it's really lucky that this was featured in Paperbacks from Hell and subsequently reprinted by Valencourt Books because otherwise I don't, I would have never heard about the story and it ended up being one of my very favorites of this year. It was a great collection. Two more left. Um, I'd also love to tell you about My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing. Yes, Samantha Downing. I had to look it up. I can't find um, my physical copy of it right now. I mean, like, I know kind of where it is. I just don't want to peel through the stacks of shit. Anyway, this was a thriller. Oh boy, this is about a husband who helps his wife with her murderous tendencies. And I really can't tell you that much more about that book because it is really imperative that you figure out all of the information about this story on your own. Like if you read this, I feel like I could do it a great injustice by even just telling you a little bit more about the plot. It was really good. It had a great twist that I didn't see coming. Um, and I really enjoyed my time reading this. I thought it was so great. Um, this is the third and final book on this list I gave five stars to. Um, I would definitely recommend it if you like thrillers. It was a very, very fantastic domestic thriller. Okay, and last but certainly not least, this is The Man from the Train by Bill James and his daughter, Rachel McCarthy James. I just talked about this um, in my wrap up for December because that's when I read it. So this might be redundant if you just watched that. But this is a historical true crime book. And in this book, they are connecting all these seemingly random and isolated axe murderers to, I guess, each other. And then eventually to somebody that they think perpetrated these. These are unsolved crimes. Uh, there were people who were unjustly tried for these. There were people who were tried and released. There were people that were lynched for these crimes. Uh, it's pretty terrible and it's very gruesome. Um, they do go into detail with what this person did. They, I mean, they were like ax murders, so they are incredibly gory. Uh, but I don't think that the authors were gratuitous in any way. Bill James' writing was really interesting, his writing style, and man, it's just so crazy. And I really like how this was told because I expected them to come right out and say, this is who we think it is and this is why. But it was more like, this is what happened and this is how they're all connected and then this is who we think it is. So they really kind of had you have the reader on edge for a lot of the book because, you know, you're just waiting to find out who this could be, who could be the murderer. And once they connected it all, it made so much sense. They believe that they've connected it to a very famous murder that happened overseas even. It's so wild. My one complaint is that there was a lot of skipping around in the timeline of the murders. So, you know, they would talk about a murder that happened in 1910. Then they'd go back and talk about one that happened in, for example, 1907. And then they'd come talk about the one um, that happened in 1912. And then like three chapters later, they'd be talking about the one that happened in 1912 again. And there were a lot of murders. There were a lot of people to keep track of. And I really wish that we had had a map 
or a physical timeline to look at uh, to kind of reference because it made it hard not having something like that. Um, I also think that possibly this could be edited down a little bit more. Um, it was wordy sometimes. Some of this stuff that is discussed, I'm not sure if it was really like super important to the story and maybe it could have, you know, been kept out, especially because it's such a long novel. But all in all, really loved it. So close to being a five star book. So close. Really great though, nonetheless. Definitely one I'd recommend if you like true, true crime. It knocked my socks off. It was so compelling and interesting and well written. So those are the 10 books I predicted would be five star reads for me in 2020. Only three of the 10 were, but there were a lot of really great ones that I read that were, you know, really enjoyable nonetheless. So I guess I'm wondering, do you guys make goals like this for yourself? Um, were there any that you predicted would that you'd love that you did um, last year? Do you have predictions for the coming year? I'd love to know. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys 